Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. We made it to episode two. I know, unbelievable. I can't believe we uh, actually made progress in people like this. <laughs> well, I'm your host, Paul. And I'm Aaron. Uh, each week we're gonna break down everything that Sharks fans are gonna wanna know about the San Jose Sharks. And in this week's episode, we'll be talking about free agent signings, maybe some signings that didn't happen, as well as some trade targets. Mm -hmm. And then we'll be swapping some Shark stories. And we'll also talk about uh, why players wanna stay in San Jose. They either retire Shark or come back and play for another year. Why is that? Very good, you ready to start the show? Let's do it. Yeah. Okay, so uh, now we're gonna talk about some of the free agent signings. Um, specifically like, a free agent signing that did not happen. Yeah. Go right ahead. Uh, and all of the ones that we talked about last week that uh, yes. didn't happen for the Sharks. <laughs> <laughs> I think we struck out on all of them. Um, yeah, well, yeah, because we didn't sign anyone at all. Right. So yeah, we must have struck out on every single one. But obviously the hot one, uh, John Tavares, yeah. um, ends up signing a seven year Contract Seven with uh, Toronto. $11 million. $11 million a year. Uh, reportedly, Doug Wilson had offered that $13 million, which is what we were talking about in episode one. Mm -hmm. um, and that just wasn't enough. No. Well, it doesn't always come down to money, mm -hmm. believe it or not. $2 million difference is a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But um, the, the factor of going home to Toronto and playing in front of the crowd, and I'm sure from, I think, what I heard in the story was that they'd played up the big, you know, if you win in Toronto, you will be immortalized <laughs> right. forever. Right. Um, I think even if the Maple Leafs get to the second or third round, he would be immortalized for at least a decade. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's unfortunate that we weren't able to land him. Yeah, unfortunate. At the same time, that gives us a lot of cap space. And, um, you know, we didn't do anything in free agency with that cap space, but uh, we'll be talking a little bit about what that might mean for us a little bit later on. Mm -hmm. um, let's go back and revisit some of the guys that we were talking about sure. that we didn't sign. Um, what happened with them? Uh, let's see. You started with uh, O'Reilly, who ended up signing in right. St. Louis. Right. Um, he, I think he would have been a great second line center mm -hmm. for the Sharks. I think we talked about that we last We talked week. about alternating him between the, the first and second line, if I remember. Right. But uh, St. Louis is looking really good now mm -hmm. um, with him added to them. Now. They're, they're depth up the middle. I think they signed Bozak, too, as the other one. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's unreal. So uh, that's one of them. Mm -hmm. um, one of my kind of dark horse ones that I liked a lot was Michael Grabner. Mm -hmm. He signed with Arizona. Yeah. If I recall, speed upon speed was yes. the way you described him. Yes. <laughs> he, uh, I think, you know, in NHL... 18 or 19 or whatever is out, uh, he probably has 100 speed out of 99. <laughs> so he's definitely the fastest nice. guy in there. And there's a little something about Michael Grabner that we'll be getting to later on. Yeah. And, okay. Yeah, yeah. And we'll talk about that too. But uh, go ahead, continue. Uh, the last one we talked about, I think, was Statsny. And mm -hmm. uh, he signed with the Vegas Knights. Boo. Uh, <laughs> I just, I'm sorry, I just, I don't yeah. personally like the Vegas Knights. I, That's fair enough. Uh, it's a great rivalry that was born within mm -hmm. a year. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I we'll think I mean I, a lot. I, I like I like the story of the Knights. I liked um, that whole dynamic of it. But hey, they're in the Western Conference, and you can't afford to like a team. <laughs> they're in the division. <laughs> <that's bouncing>. Well, <laughs> yeah, they're in your division. Yeah. yeah. So you can't afford to like a team that that's out there to to, to destroy you when it comes to playoff time. Right. So yeah. Um, you know, hey, it was it was good while it lasted, and and you know the I'm feel good so, story about so you know, trying to pump them up and and root for the the underdog. But when it came yeah. time to go against us in the playoffs and they bounced us, hey, that's that's all I needed. No more no more Vegas Golden Knights but it, fan for me. It so. felt great to watch them lose in the finals. I'm just, <laughs> first of all, I was happy for Ovechkin. I was happy for the Ovechkin, San Jose Sharks of yeah. the yeah. East uh, finally won. <laughs> yeah. So I'm very happy. Um, yep. I'm a big fan of Ovechkin. I'm glad to see him finally get over that hurdle one. He yeah, was beating Pittsburgh too, which is great. Yes, absolutely. That must have felt so good for him. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think that was probably probably bigger for him than uh, well, I wouldn't say bigger than winning no, the cup. Let's no, not go there. But the bigger cup. than winning, yeah. I think beating Pittsburgh in in the playoff series was probably huge for Ovechkin, and and to be able to move on from that uh, and and actually win. Yeah. Um. I mean, just that's. That, that being Pittsburgh icing on the cake, if you will. Yeah. But um, really such a good combination for that guy to be able to do both of those things. Mm -hmm. You know, not in just win the cup, but beat Pittsburgh in the process of doing it. Yeah. Okay, so so we didn't sign anybody in free agency. So what does that mean? We have holes to fill. What targets do you see that are out there on the market that maybe we can go after? Well, Eric Fair left. Mm -hmm. um, I 
I forget who he signed with Minnesota or something. I forget. For his age and everything, he was actually really solid. I was really pleased with Eric Fair. He was great. And yeah. and he wasn't even in the NHL before he came to Starks. He was right. buried in the minors. Yeah. So um, I thought he came in, had a great attitude. Performed admirably, yes. And from what everyone said in the locker room, he was a great presence. Right. He was perfect. He would have been great. Um, I'm not surprised at the same time that he, they didn't re-sign him. Sure. Uh, maybe yeah. they wanted a young guy to come in and, and take yeah. over that role. But uh, if they were looking to somebody on the free agency list, uh, one guy that stands out for me for the fourth line center mm-hmm. was Antoine Vermette. Um, he's not going to get you 15, 20 goals anymore. Sure. Uh, he's not going to chip in as much. However, his specialty, mm-hmm. and again, he led the league last year in his faceoff percentage. Mm. He won 60% of his faceoffs last year, which is crazy. That's awesome. Um, having that guy on a fourth line center. And yeah. your penalty kill. Yeah, absolutely. Would boost your, I mean, any penalty, you automatically get the the puck comes into your own zone. Yeah. And you have a face off. And, and the thing that that does, sorry to cut you off, but the thing that that does too is it gives those top guys the opportunity to get a rest. Mm-hmm. You play your fourth line center on the PK, win that face off, get the puck out. Even right there, you could probably just do a line change, get whoever else you mm-hmm. want back on there to kill the active play. But in your own zone, you're able to win that immediate face off. Yeah. Huge advantage. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so putting him on the on the penalty kill and winning that face off and dumping out of the zone yeah, immediately is absolutely huge. Yep. Um, uh, yeah, that that's one guy that I would mm-hmm. look. Um, another hole I see is is right now looking at the current roster, uh, left defenseman. Yes, uh, somebody to play with Brent Burns. Absolutely. Um, Yoakam Ryan did a fairly decent job. Mm-hmm. Younger guy, uh, maybe he improved over the summer. Maybe he's a little bit better than he was yeah. last year. But that could be possibly a target that we'd want to get. And uh, who do you think we would be able to get for that? Yeah, for that left side D, I mean, you can go to, um, there's some some websites out there, um, and, and you can take a look at the free agents that are currently available. You can also look at some of the guys that are going to be free agents for next season. And one guy that I thought would make a pretty good fit, and he comes at a pretty good cap hit as well, and he's coming from the East, he's coming from a team that's probably not making the playoffs and didn't last season, uh, is Jordy Ben. Um, the guy is, he's, he's defensively minded. He's big, he's strong. Um, he'll, he'll lay you out. Uh, we talked about crankshaft uh, last episode and you know that big body, but I think maybe he's got a little bit more speed than, than, yeah, than Dougie. Yeah. <laughs> I think most people have more I would, speed than Dougie. <laughs> I, I might have a little, nah, I don't. <laughs> nah, I don't. He'll slow me down too, yeah. for sure, in a heartbeat. But anyway, uh, Jordy Ben, um, the guy has a $1.1 million cap hit, so really cap friendly. And he's a left-handed shot. Uh, you could play him on the left side with Burns. They both have magnificent beards. Um, so I think it's just it's one of those matches that could work out really well. And again, you could take a look and see that there are several left-handed defensemen who could play the left side with Burns um, that are out there. So it doesn't have to be any one particular guy. There's there's lots of opportunity um, in the in the um, the upcoming UFA market yeah. uh, to, to have a trade. Could they afford to have three magnificent beards on that team? <laughs> uh, well, if they, if they, I, I don't know. It's, it's I, I can see that on a new shirt coming out. That, like, yeah, if you're yeah. On the team. So, so wait, by afford, do you mean there's too much hair, or by afford, do you mean money? Because again, the the one point one is a really good cap hit. <laughs> that is know, a good so. cap hit. Yeah. Not that we need to worry about the cap no, too much. Not a, yeah, I don't think so. But that also leaves us room for stuff that happens in the season. Exactly. Yeah, and I think that's that may be one of the things that we look at with this this free agency period. Mm-hmm. The Sharks did nothing. Uh, did we really need to do anything? I don't know. Uh, I posed, or we posed, a poll on Twitter mm-hmm. uh, asking people to vote, and uh, we had one, actually we had two write-ins. Wayne Simmons was one, right? Uh, and that was from Andrew O, who uh, wrote to us saying, what about Wayne Simmons? Mm-hmm. Uh, we kind of had a little bit back and forth on there, but um, I think teams are going to want young, uh, either prospects, picks, or someone established like Timo Meyer. Roster ready youth. And yeah, like a Timo Meyer. I would rather have Timo Meyer over mm-hmm. Wayne Simmons, only because Wayne Simmons is older. Yeah. And slower, I think. And I think they have a very similar game, the two of them, too. I mean, they're both big bodies. They both mm-hmm. bang and crash really hard. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're both really skilled in front of the net, and they're hard to move. Right. Right. Um, so, yeah, I, I would agree with you. There's there's really no reason to, to give up a guy like a Timo Meyer to go get a Wayne Simmons. They may be targeting somebody else, but given the criteria of what Philadelphia would want in return, 
uh, for a Wayne Simmons. Yeah. It seems like all signs would point towards a guy like Timo. Right. Yeah. Uh, another guy that I would like over Wayne Simmons, who is also a UFA, mm -hmm. or next year will be a UFA, is uh, Jeff Skinner, who is also uh, rumored to be on his way out in Carolina. They might be shopping him around. Can't blame him, yeah. Right. Uh, the, the, and, I, and if you recall at the, at the top of the episode, <laughs> yeah. we had said... Um, Grabner, right? We're right. talking about Grabner as one of the free agent targets that uh, got passed up on. Um, I asked the question to Aaron earlier. Okay, we talk about Skinner. Skinner and Couture, if you recall, were Calder uh, candidates. The third candidate was Michael Grabner. <laughs> so if we did pick up Grabner and we're looking <laughs> at Skinner, we'd have all three of the guys. <laughs> all three Calder. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it, it would bring up uh, an interesting dynamic in that room. Does Couture rub a little bit into the face of Jeff Skinner, you know, how many, hey, how many playoff games has you been, been yeah, into, right. you know? Um, and, you know, it's, Logan Couture is a very prideful guy. We've heard him time and time again say, you know, I love playing against the Edmonton Oilers because they got a lot of young guys, and this was years prior to before they traded everybody that they had away. But, um, you know, I love playing against those guys because I get to show these young kids, you know, that, hey, I'm still top dog around here yeah. in terms of the youth. And, uh, you know, being a prideful guy like that, I wonder what type of dynamic that would bring into the locker room if you bring in a Jeff Skinner, somebody who beat him out for the caller, but who he's had more success than throughout his career. Couture or Skinner? Or Couture has had more success than Skinner right. in his Couture. In his, that could be part of the year, team yeah. that he was on, too. Carolina's been yeah. hot garbage for the last couple of years. <laughs> Fair so. enough, yeah. Um, Probably no one around surrounding him and helping him right. uh, you know, do anything, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Uh, going back a little bit, so other trade targets uh, other than Skinner or Simmons, mm -hmm. um, what I think the Sharks kind of lack is a left winger. I think we have a good amount of centers, a mm -hmm. good amount of right wingers, and this is assuming that uh, Tierney is going to resign. Right. Um, so our centers would be set. Um, one thing I was looking at was trading for Pacioretty, who is also rumored to be on his way out. Right. Pacioretty, um, other than that one year that he had that scary injury when Chara threw him into the boards and yeah. broke his neck, like broke one of his vertebrae, I believe, in his neck. It's insane that you can come back from something <laughs> like that, especially yeah. a hit from Zidane Chara. I mean, it's not <laughs> like you just... six foot nine, I believe. He's, I mean, he's 41, too. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, now he is, but right. anyway. Yeah, go ahead, continue. Um, anyway, Pacioretty has, has scored 20 to 30 goals, I think mm -hmm. over 30 goals almost every season, other than last year. Last year was a Dan year, but I think right. it was a Dan year overall in right. Montreal. Um, Montreal seems to be hitting the blow-up button. Same with Ottawa. Those two teams yeah. just are trying to get young and mm -hmm. get good. So Pacioretty's on the training block. And actually, um, it, it would be really interesting if the Sharks could swing some sort of a deal. I just got done talking about getting a Jordy Ben to play mm -hmm. alongside of uh, Brent Burns. Burns. It would be really interesting to see if Doug Wilson could, I mean... <laughs> If he wanted to get both those players, it'd be interesting to see if he could swing some sort of deal to get a Pacioretty and a Jordy Ben. Mm -hmm. But then again, we're talking about what do you have to get back in return, right? Exactly. Yeah. So I did a little thing on Cap Friendly um, to get a Pacioretty trade going. I was thinking Donskoy would be a decent trade. A piece of a the, piece yeah, of the yeah. trade along with, I, I think I put the first round pick because mm -hmm. they're going to want a first round pick. Right. They only have a 2020 first round pick. Um, they don't have 2019. Um, so I, I put in a first round pick, Don Skoy. Going back to the patch ready trade, um, you'll see on your screen that I did a first round pick in 2020. Uh, the Sharks don't have their 2019 because Vander Kane re signed with the Sharks, so that changed the second to a first mm -hmm. to Buffalo. Um, and I traded Don Skoy away. So now our lines look like, or how I put it together, is Thornton. Pavelski, Kane on the first line. Couture, Pacioretty, Hurdle on the second. Timo, uh, Tierney, and LeBanc on the third line. Sorensen, Carlson, and Goudreau on the fourth line. Um, these lines are pretty filthy. And if you uh, if you scroll down and look at the, the power play, it's even filthier. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's insane. It's insane the depth that they would have. Well, wait, but do you have Burns and Carlson on the first power play unit? Uh, Eric Carlson. I don't have Eric Carlson. I know. Oh, <laughs> episode one. Throw right. Back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so Patrick is an option uh, for the Sharks to get. Mm -hmm. um, he also is the captain of Montreal Canadiens, so he'd bring right. some very good leadership. But he would also t be taking a step back in a leadership role. He wouldn't need to be the captain of the San Jose Sharks. Right. 
Um, so he'd be a great leader brought into the yeah. uh, locker room. Yeah. And he's still pretty young. So um, I think he'd be a good fit. I think he probably wants out of Montreal. I um, couldn't, couldn't blame him. <laughs> yeah. They had, that had that thing where he fired his agent um, during the draft. Oh, I did not hear that. Um, there was a rumor that he was coming to the San... At first, the rumor was yes. he was coming to San Jose Sharks. I do recall hearing that. And yeah. that began because... Um, Wilson was talking with the GM of Montreal, I think, the day before, and they were talking about a lot. Patch Radio was brought up. Right. On the floor of the actual uh, draft, they were talking, and people would just assumed that they were talking about Patch Radio and a trade was right. going to come. And then they thought Montreal was going to announce a trade. They didn't. And then um, it was announced by Patch Radio that he fired his agent. So I was like, whoa, <laughs> this all happened within a half an hour of each other. Wow. I was like, something happened. Wow. Come to find out, it was a trade with the LA Kings, not with the Sharks. That got nixed. And the problem was, it had to do with the draft um, picks, this last draft. So now that draft, that trade is off the table. Oh, wow. Um, another option is Matt Duchesne in Ottawa. Yeah, so Matt Duchesne was uh, kind of my, my pick there. Um, I've been Matt Duchesne since he came into the league. Um, he's just one of those guys, and I, I referenced this earlier um, to, to you, and uh, he's kind of like a, a John Tavares light to me. Mm-hmm. Um, he he's got more speed, I think. Uh, he's his hands are insane. If you've if you've ever had a chance to watch some some YouTube highlight reels of uh, of Matt Duchesne, um, just stick handling through people. It's it's it can it can start getting ridiculous. <laughs> you start getting that fifth video, and it's just like, how is he doing this? He's got incredible hands. He really does. And he's fast. He can score. Mm-hmm. He's um, he's just all up and down the ice. I don't know about his defensive side necessarily, but if we're talking about, uh, again, something we go back to episode one, we talked about replacing that one seed, replacing that number one center, and we said, who better than T- John Tavares? Well, if John Tavares is off the table, to me, who better than a guy like a Matt Duchesne? Mm-hmm. I mean, it, for, for my money, my 1C isn't so much of a two-way. He's more offensively uh, offensively minded. And a guy like Matt Duchesne, he fits that bill to yeah. me. And, and again, like you said, put him next to a Vander Kane. Those two are flying up and down oh, yeah. the ice. That would be... That'd be a lot of speed that, for teams to deal with. That's the way the NHL's going these yep. days is speed. Absolutely. Yeah. So I put together a uh, cap friendly as well, and i mm-hmm. uh, share that with you guys right now. And uh, you'll see it up on your screen. And essentially what I did was I took Matt Duchesne and took him from Ottawa. And maybe it's a little unrealistic, and I'm sure people are going to yell at me for this, but <laughs> uh, I said <laughs> Dylan Gambrell, Tim Heed, and then two seconds. Now, I'm sure they're going to want a first, and maybe they'll want a roster player on top of that, but... I thought maybe with Ottawa being in, in fire sale mode right now that uh, having two guys that are prospects would be um, would be welcomed by the franchise. And maybe the two seconds, okay, we, maybe we have to give them a first. But you know, as Aaron pointed out, we have a first uh, to give. So if we needed to, we certainly could. Um, also, you can see on there that I've got my Jordy Ben pick um, <laughs> going <laughs> coming to, to San Jose for the, uh, the third uh, round pick in 2020. Given them in Montreal, I, I mean, third, you could argue that's a little much or a little uh, not so much or, you know, whatever the case is. The fact is, we've got picks. We can make this happen. We've got, you know, prospects in the pool that we can get a Jordy Ben for. So I'm not too worried about that. But my lineup looks something like this. I would have uh, Matt Duchesne at center with uh, Couture and Tomas Hurdle on his wings. And then, uh, I mean, that gives Hurdle, you know, the, the big body on there and it lets Couture and Matt Duchesne do a lot of the playmaking and the scoring there. Then you've got uh, Joe Pavelski centering Evander Kane and Jonas Donskoy. Again, that line, Kane being the big body, Joe being the immovable force in front of the net, and Donskoy just stick handling like crazy. Uh, third line, Joe Thornton we had talked about in, in episode one. If you could put Joe on the third line, um, what team's going to be able to match that really? You throw him with a body like Timo Meyer, and then you put a goal scorer like Kevin LeBanc out there with Jumbo Joe. We've seen the Joe Thornton effect with uh, guys like Chichu, Setaguchi, and anybody else he's ever Nils played with. Ekman. Yeah, there's really no reason a guy like Kevin LeBanc couldn't uh, couldn't capitalize on that as well. And uh, for the final line, assuming we re-sign Chris Tierney, I've got him in there with Melker Carlson, and then someone who's really interesting, this Antti Suomela. I don't know how to pronounce his name, but um, he's supposed to be a Jonas Donskoy um, type player, maybe even a little bit better is what I've been hearing, but... 
Um, I'd like to see what he's he can do, so I threw him on that line too. And then looking at the defense, there's uh, Jordy Ben there right alongside Brant Burns. I put Vlasic and Braun as the, the top pairing because mm. realistically, <laughs> they're going to play more minutes. Uh, in, a, in a playoff series, they're going to play more minutes, I feel. Um, they need to be out there more often shutting guys down. So that's the uh, the lineup that I chose. And you know, if you don't agree with the picks or the trades, please feel free to let me know, and I'll be happy to <laughs> fix that on Cat Friendly for you if you'd like. Uh, but the fact is, we we have picks, we have players, we have prospects, we have guys that we can move uh, to make these things happen. It may not happen the way that Aaron or I had sketched it up on Cat Friendly, but uh, it can get done. Uh, you may have to lose a guy like a Donskoy, but hey, this this new guy coming in, which I know nothing already. about him, yeah, but if, if he's as good as Donskoy is, then it, it's okay to lose somebody, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, going back to that Twitter poll that we had posted, yeah. um, another comment we had, uh, from Megan Ray is, do we need to do anything? I, I think it's a valid point. It's I think an um, absolutely valid point. You look at the current Sharks roster, and we pointed out some holes on left D mm -hmm. or maybe a fourth line center, but those aren't glaring holes. Uh, the Sharks have a very strong team, uh, very similar to the team that they had last year. Mm -hmm. Those younger guys are a little bit older, a little bit wiser. We're going to have a fully healthy Joe Thornton. Joe will be tore, looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah he tore his knee. Um, the year before, around uh, March, I think it was, mm -hmm. had surgery um, and was able to come back. When season started, he wasn't himself. Yeah, yeah. It took him until almost about Christmas time. Mm -hmm. And having done the exact same surgery Joe did, um, I fully understand what that entails. Oh. Granted, he's a professional athlete and doesn't have a day job where I had to go to work and right. rehab. Yeah. Um, it took me a little bit longer, but uh, <laughs> um, he, this time around, he blew out his other knee right. and uh, had surgery a lot earlier. So he's going to be back probably full health by the time the season starts. Mm -hmm. um, he, you know, he wasn't the quickest guy to begin with, but yeah. he's going to be healthy. So you, you expect him to be essentially healthy and ready for like preseason. Then. Yeah. So that by the time the actual regular season rolls around, he's good to go. Yeah. 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 I think. What we saw last year was right around Christmas time, right the new year, mm -hmm. uh, he started really picking it up and was playing well again, and then got hurt and again. And then he got hurt again. So we saw the old Joe for a couple months, and mm -hmm. now I think next year we'll get him for most of the season. So um, I think I think the team looks good. Um, and we have so much cap space that I think, should something happen... Yes. Uh, we're gonna have the Injuries. flexibility. <laughs> Injuries happen. Yeah. We're gonna have the flexibility to go out and get somebody. Yeah. Um, and you never know a team could be tanking that was unexpecting. So and they could have some some guys on the roster that are UFAs coming up and they don't want to renew them. Yeah. And yeah. and and to follow up on that, I like the point that uh, what was her name again? Uh, Megan. Megan. I, I like the point that you made, Megan. Um, we would. I don't think we really needed to do anything. I hear a lot of people saying, oh, everybody else got better. Everybody else. Nah, I don't know that everybody else got better. I think everybody else signed yeah. a player that was maybe better than somebody else that, that they may have had on the roster, but I'm sure they had to move other guys. If you take a look at the overall roster of those teams that got better, I'm wondering how much better they actually got or did they just get a, a good name, right? Yeah. So um, I, I like the point that you bring up, and I think that again, we don't have to do everything in free agency. There's trades that can be made. There's a trade deadline. There's We can see other players play, mm -hmm. how they're performing this season, uh, and, and make determinations off of that. There's really no reason that everything has to be done during the free agency period. Especially the first few days of yeah. uh, free agency. We see a lot of people signing bad contracts. Ridiculous contracts, yeah. And part of the reason of that is uh, market versus value. You're yes. not going to pay some guy what they're worth. You you got to pay what the other guy, more than what the other teams are going to pay for him right. to get him. It's kind of like buying a house. You <laughs> go in, right? And yes. you go, okay, especially in this market, yeah. you go, well, okay. It's a good, this is a good point to let everyone know we are actually in San Jose. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're not just San Jose fans. We're rooted. So, right. um, Born and raised. Too. Born and raised. Yeah. And uh, uh, so, yeah, the, the market here is insane. It's crazy. <laughs> but Going to, to buying a house, right. you go, okay, this, they say it's worth a million bucks. How much is it? You're actually you know, paying not one worth. point how much, Yeah, how much do you have to pay to get to land the house? Yeah. It's the same concept yeah. of what you're getting with these guys. 
Uh, Doug Wilson doesn't like to do that very often. He likes to uh, not overpay. He thinks it's a little crazy. Except when he's offering $13 million to John well, Tafari. <laughs> it's a little different. Agreed. A little different. different Continue. <laughs> um, in that case, the value was there. Yes. Um, I think um, he tends to wait and be more patient mm -hmm. and take advantage, not advantage of teams per se, but uh, if you look at Buffalo mm -hmm. and they wanted to trade Kane, nobody yeah. was really interested, it didn't mm -hmm. seem like. Um, I think that was a good steal for the Sharks. I, you know, I was a little skeptical at first, um, and you talked me down on it. Um, you know, I was thinking, okay, you know, this is the guy that he's had some problems on social media, and he's had, you know, some other shoulder issues and that kind of stuff. That was the physical stuff didn't bother me too much, to be honest. But it was more of the personality side that I was worried about, and um, I just don't see that being an issue anymore, especially with. They have a strange relationship that I'd like to. I'd love to know more about. Uh, he yeah. and Jumbo Joe. Oh yeah. I want to know more about it. Yeah. Like when when he called him up. I, I, we we saw the article. Yeah. Right. The um, Players Tribune. Yeah, article. the Players Tribune yeah. article where uh, Kane was saying, "I got three calls. The first call was from my uh, the no the GM oh. who said I'm going to trade you." Uh, to San Jose. The second call was from the agent yeah. saying, you're being traded to San Jose. And the third call was from Jumbo Joe yeah. saying, you're going to be shot. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, Joe Thornton picked him up at the airport. Um, at the I, time, he was injured. And he was injured. He at, was yeah. even playing with the Sharks. He was, he, I mean, he'd been, he was rehabbing his knee. Yeah. Well, like, he was still in rehab. Like, he wasn't even, like, uh, skating, I don't uh -huh. think, at that point. So yeah. he, he didn't have to do that. Yeah. He's not, he's, uh, he's not even the captain. I, I would so, just, I would love to know more about their bromance. Yeah. Like, I think it's, it, it might be, you know, yeah. under the cover. But um, and, and I just one real quick thing before we move on. Uh, Joe, I, I feel like Joe is just such um, a, a stand-up guy and an amazing uh, person outside of just being a hockey player. If you look at what he was telling Doug Wilson was, sign John Tavares if you can, whatever it takes, yeah. and. I'll take whatever's left, mm -hmm. essentially, is what he's saying. Now, some of that may have to do with the fact that he's looking for his, his Stanley Cup before oh, he's sure. done, yeah. right? But I feel like it's it's a genuine, like, I just want to do what's best for the team. I'm not here to try to get as much money out of you guys as I possibly can. Right, yeah. And I, I, I only wish the guy was 10 years younger. I would take, <laughs> you know what I mean? We had him when he was 10 years younger. I don't younger. <laughs> care. I wish he was 10 years younger again because, you know what, that that <laughs> attitude, there's something about that. I just, I, I, I love that. And it's one of those things that... I don't think you see much outside of hockey. The hockey players are like that. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. I just wanted to take a second there and say, Jumbo, we love you, buddy. Yeah. Going back to uh, Jumbo coming to pick up Kane. Uh, he's been here for a long time, and he's essentially taken home hometown discounts yes. to stay here. Um, he lives here. He owns a mm -hmm. house here, mm -hmm. which not every player does, and it's also not easy to do around here. Um Jumbo's not the first player to do that. Mm -hmm. The first shark player to do that. Yeah. There's a lot there's a lot in their sharks history that have um stayed in San Jose. Yeah. Either, even after they've left, right. either been traded or signed as free agents, mm -hmm. they always come back to San Jose. Why do you think that is? Uh, Dan Dan Boyle's a good example. Yeah. Dan Boyle uh, when he uh, ended up retiring, he didn't finish as a shark. Uh he re he stopped playing elsewhere. Where, where where did he go? I can't remember now where he went. I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> Regardless, doesn't matter. We're talking Sharks hockey anyway. Yeah. So he came back to the Sharks organization, signed a one-day contract or whatever it was, so. To, so that he could retire as a Shark. This is a guy who won his Stanley Cup with the Tampa Bay Lightning. Right. Yeah. He he played with the Sharks and he he you know poured his heart out on the ice for the Sharks. He only likes bays. But he <laughs> okay. So he he could have very easily thought of you know Tampa Bay is kind of like my home because I mean, that's where I won my cup. But it is Florida. <laughs> We're trying not to like slam right. other places, right. but, but screw Florida. Anyway, so <laughs> so with San Jose, he, he you know he wants to come back. He wants to live here. He wants to retire as a shark. Uh, another good one, Evgeny Nabokov. Nabokov yeah. went and played for the Islanders for a while, um, and I'm not sure exactly where he went after that. But he, no he, when he was done, him, he signed as a day for a shark. And oh, yeah, and he yeah. signed uh, as a shark for a day and retired yeah. as a shark. And I know for a fact that he lives in San Jose as well, actually. <laughs> yeah. um, but 
you know, there's there's other guys too that that I see when I go down because I, I play beer league hockey. I'm not very good or anything, but I do play. And uh, I see Kyle McLaren every once in a while down <laughs> there. Yeah, he's one of the guys that helps coach um, the the youth, the junior sharks. Yeah, and um, you know, he's a guy that's long removed from yeah. from playing for the sharks. Mm-hmm. Um, another one is, I mean, obviously Curtis Brown because he does the broadcast with with right. Brody. But if you've if you've watched those, you know that Curtis Brown is also a coach. Or he helps coach at least for some of the junior shark teams, uh, or at least one of them. Mush Brian Marchment. There you go. He's on the uh, development staff or yeah. the uh, scouting staff. And 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 Mike Ricci as well. And I just don't know what it is necessarily that keeps them all there, but there's just something about Santa. Maybe it's the sun. Yeah, yeah, maybe it's probably. the weather. I mean, yeah. maybe that's really all there is to it, and we're just looking too much into it. But <laughs> I, I mean, you see all these players that they just want to come back. They want to. They want to live here. They want to play here. They want to live here. They want to be a part of the community, mm-hmm. and they can they contribute to the community um, in everything that they do. I, yeah. I mean, wh- why do you think? Um, I think all of those reasons. I think. Uh, I mean, we're going to be biased, obviously, because yeah. we're from here. But um, yeah. the weather, I think, is probably a huge draw. I mean, most of these guys come from Canada. That's yeah, freezing cold in yeah. the winter time, and our winters, you know, you know, on a cold night or not, not even a night, a cold day yeah. in the winter time would be in the upper forties. <laughs> like that's that's freezing. Yeah. Um, normally, it's like in the upper fifties, maybe low sixties. <laughs> so we don't. Yeah, we we kind of don't have a winter. We kind of skip. We go summer, fall, spring. The Fin Factor, where we give you the weather report for right. San Jose as well. Yes. <laughs> we are all encompassing here on the Fin Factor, folks. So, um, so another guy that uh, has been around a long yeah, time yeah. is Owen Nolan. Yes, uh, he owns the Britannia Arms. Yes, in I believe the one in right off Almaden. Almaden, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, and he also owns one downtown. I don't know. Does he own them all? He could surely afford them all, I'm sure. <laughs> but anyway, he's, he's another guy that's been around for a long yes. time. Um, and I actually have a very funny story uh, going back to yeah. when I was uh, one of my first jobs. I was working at Long's Drugs, which is no longer around now. It's a CV. They got bought by CVS. CVS yeah. um, I was a photo technician. Ah. So I was developing pictures back, you know, before the before digital, digital age. Yeah, there you go. Going way back. Um, <laughs> I'm filing, I printed some pictures and I'm filing, I'm putting them away and I'm, and I'm going through the names and I go, oh, and Nolan, like, <laughs> no, come on, oh, and Nolan. <laughs> so I pull it out and I'm looking through the pictures and I'm like, oh my God, it's Owen Nolan. I thought somebody was playing a joke, yeah. saving it as their name. And I was like, wow, it's actually Owen Nolan. That's awesome. He developed his pictures here. Um, wow. And I forgot about it. Like two weeks later, yeah. I'm there by myself. There's usually people all around the store. There's people working in the photo booth with me and I was by myself yeah and in walks in Owen Nolan's big old black trench coat and I'm like oh my god it's Owen Nolan and I was just freaking out I was yeah I was a teenager um <laughs> so he comes up and uh he's like Owen Nolan I go yeah I know <laughs> I turn around and I walk back and I get his pictures and he just develops them and I go oh you have another role here from <laughs> Like a month or two months ago, he just never picked up. He's like, yeah. oh, I'll get that too. And there were pictures of him duck hunting. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. That's so God. stupid. So, so I walk up and, and I ring him up and he goes in his trench coat and he pulls out this fat wad of cash and just <laughs> plops it out. And I'm like, wow, it's actually Owen Nolan. That's so cool. <laughs> and then... Um, and then I like realized, like at, when I was working there, I would I actually, I would it um, the photo section was like also the technology section. Okay, yeah. So they had uh, <laughs> clock radios there. I opened up a clock radio like out of the box and just plugged it in so that I can listen to Sharks games while okay. I was working. Sure, they're playing. Yeah. And I knew they had a game that day um, because they're playing in Detroit. Uh, so yeah, the yeah, game yeah, was yeah. on at like okay. four thirty. Nice. Our time. <laughs> so um, so I look at him and I go, wait what? Why aren't you in Detroit? And he goes, Oh, I had, I just had surgery. And I go, and out loud, I go, Oh yeah, I knew that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he probably just looked at me like, hey, you stupid kid. <laughs> and I just felt so dumb. And he left, and it still like didn't process for a while after he left. But oh my god, I just, I just made a complete fool of myself to Owen Nolan. I had my chance to like get stuff autographed, like. Oh. Oh yeah, I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> Such a loser. That's awesome. Oh god. Um, so actually, I, I also have an Owen Nolan story. It's, yeah. it's it's a short one though. Um, so I had this um, 
opportunity to tour the tank and everything. And the only thing they don't show you is inside the Sharks locker room. So unfortunately, that's the only place I've actually not been in inside of uh, SAP Center. And I'm just looking for an opportunity to do that. Sharks, if you're listening. <laughs> anyway, um, so we were walking around and um, we we're about to go through these doors. They showed us like the trucks that were outside and everything mm -hmm. else for the broadcasting and everything. So there, we're walking through this corridor and we're about to go through this door, but the door opens this way first. We're kind of, oh, you know, and here's Owen Nolan. <laughs> And it just like hit you at the door. No, seriously, like, and it would have knocked me out. But yeah. like, so like, he opens the door, and I go like this, and I look at him, I go, <laughs> and he he sees me, and he just kind of smiles, and I go, <laughs> and I look, and I go, and it just finally, I snapped out of it, and I went, no, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> I just no. Did uh -uh. he hear you? Yeah, he's <laughs> he's laughing, and he looks back at me, and I'm like, uh uh, no, no. <laughs> And I had all this stuff, and I just dropped it to the ground, full on like Wayne and Garth, knees, we're not worthy, I'm not worthy. And he's just dying laughing, he goes, all right, come here, and he takes a picture with me. Yeah. And if I could find that picture, I don't, I don't know where it is, but if I could find that picture, we'll I'll absolutely it yeah. share it, you know. If not on like a graphic, then we'll do it on like Twitter or something like that. But um, I was smiling ear to ear, man. It was, it was insane, like... I, I don't know, because Owen Nolan was always just one of those guys that like I just respected so much playing the way that he played the game. He was a goal scorer. Yeah. He could. He was. He's a powerful. Big, he big a power body. Forward. Yeah, he's yeah. prototypical power forward. Yep. And um, the, then he scored. Yeah. Oh, the All Star game. He if you don't know what I'm talking about, yeah, he should have gotten the first star of that game. Yeah. He did not get. How did he not get the first star of that game <laughs> in San Jose? Like, yeah. Yeah, we hosted the game. <laughs> home crowd. He scores a hat trick. On his third goal, he calls yeah. the goal on Hashik yeah, of all goalies. Going there. Thank you. Oh, yeah. God. But anyway, uh, that's that's my story. So if you've got a story that you want to share with us, that'll be our fresh catchphrase hey. for the week. So I think this is, uh, how are we going to do this? Hashtag shark encounters? Shark encounters. Yeah, we'll do hashtag shark encounters is what we're going to do. So if you've got a Sharks player story that you want to share with everybody, please don't tell us about the time you went into a cage and there was a tiger <laughs> shark swinging around. We don't care about that. Um, yeah, if you can share whatever your story is with us, that'd be awesome. We'd love to hear it. And uh, maybe we'll call it out in the next episode and, and uh, if it's a really good story. Yeah, right. Has so. to be good. <laughs> Hopefully better than ours. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that. Oh. Okay. Well, I think that wraps up episode two yeah. of the the Fin Factor. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Thanks, and uh, we'll see you again maybe next week. See you next week. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the show. You can support us by following us at the Fin Factor on Twitter and Facebook. You can also find us on Instagram as at Fin Factor. If you enjoyed this episode, please like and subscribe. Remember to hit that bell icon to get an alert when we post a new video. If you're listening to us as a podcast, please give us a five-star review. If you want to support our show, please share our episode with your friends. Also, leave us a comment of what you thought of this episode.